Today I want to welcome Dr. Chris De Beer um, on Conversations with Neil. Um, Dr. Chris is a naturopath. Can you please explain to us what that is? Uh, Neil, yeah, it's, it's a broad spectrum, and it's what, what naturopath means in it, that our people, is, uh, you know, we look at things differently than normal people and normal doctors and so on. We look at the natural way the body function, mind, body, spirit, all three in, in connection, and then all three must be intact, otherwise things doesn't work. But uh, natural medicine is very interesting, very old systems, very old. So Africa is a little bit far behind the rest of the world. If you look at Germany, where I've started and where I've learned and everything, and where I went to study in it, um, it's very big. 80% of the, of the normal doctors are doing inter integrated, they call it integrated natural medicine. That's whereby the difference is, uh, let me explain, between us and a normal doctor or a sports doctor, is that we look at, not at the symptoms of things and there's something wrong with someone, but that we look at the natural causes of things in it. And what causes it? And if you fix the causes, then the symptoms will, will disappear. And, it, um, and it is a, natural medicine is as old as the Bible. And people just doesn't know that in South Africa. And it, uh, so and that's what we, we study. We study, all, we call it alternative medicine, f physiology, hematology, blood. Uh, I specialize a little bit in blood systems in it, called dark field and bright field microscopic blood scanning <laughs> out of a word <laughs> That's a uh, so word. yeah but it's actually very it's very simple uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's only a, a a way to to test things and quickly see what's wrong with, with a sports guy or, or a normal person if there's anything uh, uh, not normal or is sick or got a, some sort of a disease yeah, um, any state you can see immediately in the blood so that's why we use those systems, very old systems in it. In Europe, it's very, very popular. In South, South Africa, not yet, but I think it will come. Um, the MCC uh, and Medical Council are looking into it. Uh, we work very hard to, to, to get it to be uh, uh, you know, approved. Um, like myself, I'm, I'm, I've got a, a practice number through the Natural Healers Association, very big association in South Africa. Um, that's where we through the syst systems we do, we do it um, and train other people. We're starting in March by training other doctors um, and uh, students. We've got a lot of students. Uh, academy in South Africa that's very old. I think it's already 15, 18 years in South Africa. Okay. People does not know that where you can study these natural medicine. And that's why we call natural paths. <laughs> okay. Can you give us a brief history of um, where you started and how you got into um, this and, and how it um, became yeah I don't like to talk about myself and it but uh, I was 19 years old after school and I did very well in athletic sport uh, through a world record and a 17 or for a 17 year old and because of sanctions and the politics in those days we couldn't compete international and what sport was that? Uh, it was javelin uh, it was javelin sorry uh, javelin in athletics and so the Germans called my dad in those days it wasn't cell phones and things in it and uh, I said to him that uh, I must come to Germany and they'll try to get me in the international circuit to compete international, even in a, a nat national team for Germany in 1984 uh, for the Olympics in it. So it was a, uh, you know, I, I thought, yes, um, this is, it, perhaps I can do it and, and um, perhaps it'll, it's, a, it's a chance for me to, to, to compete international and I went there. Uh, unfortunately, I was subpoenaed to come back for the army came back for army two years and then went back to Germany again to train there. And uh, my coach, Peter Wunold, he still lives, he's over 90 years old. He trained me for many years. I stayed in Germany on and off nine months of the year. I was in Germany. The other, when it's cold in Germany, I came back <laughs> to South Africa. So that's where it all started. And I, just to brief you quickly how I got involved in it. Um, I went there the first time in 1980, 19 years old. and. This is what they've done to me. They looked at my blood, test, done some biopsy tests, but whereby in those days took a little muscle out of my leg and tell me that I'm in the right sport and they will coach me. And I said, oh, I thought, <laughs> you know, look at the distance and I said, why doing these tests? And I said, no, no, we don't waste time in Germany. We want to make sure you're in the right sport by doing genetical tests in those days already. In South Africa, if you talk about okay. genetical muscle 
gen genetical tests and they think people think I'm crazy and it and that's how all all the, and that's how far South Africa is behind the rest of the world. And then they came back and says I, I won't see 40 years old. I can't believe I'm doing so well. That's actually when it started. And I said, why? And they said, what do you eat in South Africa? <laughs> I said, meat, a lot of meat. <laughs> My dad is the boss of the meat board for 30, 38 years. So we grew up with meat in a hostel. Bolton was the in thing day and night. And I grew up in the Brist area. And, you know, my grandfathers are all farmers, cattle farmers. So meat was the in thing. And I said, why? And they said, yes, we haven't seen see a guy your age, so such young, with such a lot of uric acid. And I said, what is uric acid? And they said, that's, that's what causes a lot of problems, joint problems, muscle problems. And at that stage, just for interest, I had already had two elbow operations okay. um, because of the javelin and that, and we didn't know why. And that was a reason for it. And they said, oh, there's your reason. You're eating wrongly. You, you can't eat such a lot of red meat. It doesn't that's work for your geni genetical blood type. And I said, gee, that's interesting. And that's where it started. And that interested me. And later on, I went into it and, and I was, got involved with a, or a friend that was a natural doctor in South Africa and also met with a, a guy that was a... a Chinese uh, from China and it he was a, a pole vaulter and his dad was a natural path in, in China and I went to visit him we were young and students and for holidays in it and, and, and I was just very interested in what he was doing and he said to me you um, why did don't you do it why do you go to go study it and, it and and this friend in Germany that I had was a doctor um, he, he also you know said to me well this is what you must do and go back to South Africa and learn the people there the right ways and it and that's actually what happened. So I went to Germany and do all these tests and went all over the world and worked with the best doctors in the world in Australia and in Europe, Germany itself, Austria, all over. Um, it was just interesting to see how these guys do it and look at people differently than us, especially when, you, when it comes to nutrition. It's a huge difference. And that's actually where I got involved because of my sport. And after sport, I just <coughs> decided to, to study more and. And uh, I've done a, a master's degree in, in, in sports nutrition and human nutrition and a PhD in alternative medicine. And I just done one now again, <laughs> but I'm going to give in in February. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll stop then and, 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 and start to train other people like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> things in it and help. So yeah, that's where it started. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I believe the, the last uh, PhD you did now was uh, on uric acid. Yeah, yeah, okay. there was uh, uric acid just to prove to people, especially in South Africa, every single kid that I'm seeing nowadays, it's, it's actually scary. Um, I've got a lot of uric acid. You see this, these crystals in the blood and then they struggle to compete, they struggle to perform. And well, according to me and, and the research I've done, I think South Africans have got a lot of talent in all sports, but it's one of the problems is, is the, the nutrition. They don't know eat. what to eat, when to eat what, yeah. and, and, and eat according to their genetical body compositions and muscle fibers and all those things. Okay. We don't look at it. And that's what I do. Okay. I look at people, you know, people are unique. They're not one of us is the same. So you can't eat anything. So um, in our conversations, we've spoken about blood mm -hmm. and um, you do blood analysis. So when you do blood analysis what what does uh, blood consist of and what is the importance of blood in our body um, well that's the most important thing in it because blood carries everything blood carries the oxygen that's the most important thing nothing can perform or progress or uh, you know develop without oxygen nothing can live without oxygen not outside us and not inside us and blood that's why blood is important but the blood thing like I said, it's, a, it's an old history thing. That's how everything started many, many years ago by looking at blood. People and the doctors in those days could see what's wrong with someone, seeing the bacteria, seeing the viruses. You can see anything in blood. In three minutes, basically, you can see absolute everything. But blood, why important? The question is um, because of the fact that it carries everything and it, it's influenced by a lot of things in it. And one of the things is, is food. And as immediately when you eat something wrong, the, the, the red blood cells react. That's human. It's, it's actually it's incredible. <coughs> yeah. the, the red cells will immediately react and, and form antigens. And that's why we can't get each other's blood, because the antigens clashes. Only O negative can get 
you can give to anyone and people can get O negative blood because O negative blood haven't got antigens. And, but the rest of the blood types, we can't give anyone A, can't get a B and a B, a A and a B, vice versa because of the antigens. And antigens, those antigens, certain foods causes the antigens to clash and foods have got antigens. And that's where the problem started. And then the cells will react by secreting a hormone around them, in simple terms, called lactin. It's, it's basically protein sugars that develop to cover itself. And then it's like glue, and then they agglutinate, and that causes to, to them to clot. And the blood will clot, and, and then obviously your oxygen in the, in the blood is very low. And for a sports person, especially sport, can't perform because everything will work harder in the body, the heart, the lungs, the brain, um, the kidneys, everything needs oxygen and it doesn't get 100% oxygen and then the whole metabolism will be you know, upside down and unbalanced. Okay. So that's, that's what happened. Yeah. So am I correct in saying that there are different types of, of blood groups and that there are different foods that each blood group um, needs to, to, to eat um, to keep the body in a healthy balance? Yes. Without this process yeah. happening. Yes, but we must be careful. There's huge, there's a lot of uh, research, huge research and things done on blood type, um, f nutrition and that. All true. Um, there's a few doctors that have done all those research already. Um, the Germans and myself, uh, over the 25 years you know, involved in these things, I went deeper into it and look at other things than just look at the blood type. And what I have found is that even though those books are correct, I still I differ 20% from it. Because let's say, let me explain, if I'm an A blood type and you are A blood type, and let's say <coughs> muscle-wise I've got red muscle, slow twitching fibers, and you've got fast twitching fibers, white muscle, and we are both A type, we will more or less eat the same food then. But for instance, white muscle will need more amino acids, proteins okay. to perform whereby my red muscle needs more carbohydrates. And that's where the 20% differences come in. Okay. So it, to eat according to the book, the books and all the internet things about blood types is all correct, but I'll say 80%. Okay. That we differ 20% because of these other genetical things that we don't look at. And that's what I, what I do. I look further into it and deeper into it by looking at someone's uh, muscle fibers uh, and they build, they, okay. they um, femur and, and those sort of things in it. Okay. Okay. Um, in in terms of the um, of of health, when you look at um, sporting performance, obviously oxygen is very very important in the the, the carrying of oxygen through the body. Um, in terms of health and general health, what are the types of illnesses that people get if their blood is not um, in the correct pH or the in, in balance? Again, food causes it. Food's a major factor. Food, certain foods, like I've just explained, causes the blood to clot, and the pH obviously will then be become acidic. And if your blood is acidic, we all know for a thousand years now. Me know, you know, the industry doctors know, the scientists know that no living organism, virus, bacteria, fungi, or cancer, can live and progress in an alkaline environment. Um, just in an acidic environment, if a swimming pool are blue, nothing lives in there. When a swimming pool are green, everything lives in there. What makes us green? That's why do we get sick? Why do we pick up viruses and bacteria and all these things in it? It's because we, our pH is acidic. Uh, it's not 7.4. 7.4 is, is more or less the balance, perfect uh, pH for the blood. Um, and that's... It. Absolutely, I will say 88 to 90 percent. I wonder sometimes if it's not more caused by wrong foods, and that's where these certain foods causes these acids and the antigens clashes down with someone's blood if it doesn't, it's not compatible, and then the, all sorts of illnesses would cause. Obviously, if your pH balance is low and you pick up all these viruses or bacteria, then your chances to to get a disease is is just so much bigger and it's, uh, you can't get sick when you, you're alkaline uh, your body is uh, you know ba in balance and it so so common flus um, and then other illnesses that are more uh, you know a little bit more life-threatening like cancers and um, 
we've been talking about MS and some of these illnesses, they are all blood related and, and pH related. Yes, absolutely. And it's actually um, scary if you, like I've done some research on these sicknesses, uh, like US van der West days and to mention someone's name. Um, it bothers me why it happened and I went to it and look at it and who getting it and why is it such a lot of sports people. Well, more and more supplements started coming into the world because of food. Uh, there's a place for supplements, I'm not against it, um, for good natural supplements and that, but supplements started because food is not food anymore and there's a huge reason for that because everything has been processed quicker and faster. Everything. And, and it has to last longer. Last longer and those sort of things. It. And that's a reason for these things. And certain blood groups uh, um, mustn't eat certain things or a lot of those things in it, percentage-wise. And that will cause in a chemical reactions in the body whereby, um, for instance, the, the red cells, um, the mitochondria that can't um, store the basic nutrients, the good nutrients, and in, uh, out of the food and the supplements I eat in it, and it, it starts trying to get rid of it. And that influences the whole metabolism then, whereby people will get a new, new neuron problems. That's your MS, your lupus, and Crohn's disease, and those sort of things in it. Uh, because the red cells doesn't get feed with the right food, okay. in simple terms. It's more yeah. s scientific than that, but yeah. that's, that's basically what, what happened. In it. Well, normal, so if you took normal, Kids, I see a lot of kids, mothers coming in and says, Ugh, this kid got a, a snotty nose again, a lot of mucus or whatever. That's not, we had every second kid that comes here have got it. And it's actually simple. It's, all of those is caused by food. If you just take bread in South Africa, bread, I've got a lot of preservatives in nowadays to keep the bread fresh and don't, go, don't grow fungi anymore to sell more bread and keep it longer fresh. And those preservatives and, 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 and food like bread, causes a lot of m mucus. Especially kids under 12 years old, their systems are very sensitive. And it's not to say they can't eat bread, but it's the things in the bread, in the food, that causes these, okay. these mucus and, 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 and sinuses and post-nasal drip. Taking off the bread or just toast the bread and the, and, the, and the glue and the preservatives is out and all the sinuses are gone. That's very interesting. Um, what is the, the well, in, in looking at this, most illnesses, um, are then curable or to a certain extent reversible if you change the way you eat? Yes, yeah. yeah I'll say in the last five years in South Africa, uh, I've seen people, um, I've got testimonials of cancer that I've, I've cured. Um, I can give you names in it, and you can phone him, I can show you what they've said about the things by just changing their food. Again, yes, yeah, because the food, that's what you need. You can't go out without petrol, without food. A car needs petrol to go, or, and the same with a human being. And the right petrol, a diesel can't get petrol, petrol can't get diesel. And if you give, give someone the right food and it, and it gets alkaline, then those things just they can't live. get lived. Yeah, and the body heals itself. That's the thing. That's why natural medicine or natural food is, is, is such important in it, because we give the body synthetic medicines and we give them synthetic foods and all sorts of things and that the body is not made actually to handle those things we we're not developed to to do that to to handle those things in it and that's what happened in, in these chemical reactions we call it sulfurs protoplasm and things that start developing in the blood and that's where people why people get long-term diseases and autoimmune diseases and if you change it around by giving, start giving the right food, uh, it just changes back and the body heals itself and get rid of all those sulfurs and all the strange things that we have seen in blood uh, caused by food. It's very interesting for me how some people take medicine, and, and not to say that medicine is not, yeah. not the, the right way to go, but take medicine but never change their diet. And um, it seems like it just works against each, each other. Um, yeah, oh, <laughs> just to give an example, it's interesting that like if you take cholesterol in South Africa, it's huge, it's a lot of medicine or cell, we call it statins. Um, it's easy for t normal doctors to give someone a medicine like a statin for, for cholesterol. But what do you do? <laughs> Nothing going to change. The, the cholesterol won't go away because the question is what causes cholesterol? Yeah. Food wrong food <laughs> exactly. or uh, over usage of over consumption of meats and animal proteins mainly causes uric acid and cholesterol they go together 
Um, it's caused by things like milk, cheese, and meat. Not to say you can't eat it, you're not allowed to eat it, but you overdo it. It's yeah. you know, in South Africa, and that's what happened in it. But if you don't change that, that causes the, the, yeah. the, the, the problem, cholesterol, you can take whatever you want, it'll still be there because yeah. it's, it's keep on developing. That and that's what the people don't look at. I think that's the most important thing for me to take out of today is that um, we need to start looking at, at the cause and the root cause of, of these things and, and not so much the symptoms. The symptoms is a warning sign, mm -hmm. but um, and then to act. And that's in the, the nice thing for us to be able to speak to you today is to, to learn more about these fields and things that, that a lot of people don't know about so um, that we know where to go look um, when we have warning signs and we have symptoms um, and, and start looking to, to improve diets and, and those type of things that can make a long-term you know, health benefit for, or have a long-term health benefit for all of us. Um, what would be in, in sports, um, if you change your diet, what would be a, a, um, like the, the type of uh, performance enhancement that you would get from, from eating the correct type of diet? and um, getting the right type of nutrients in. What, what would the differences be when you do sports? You yeah, in South Africa, huge. <laughs> so it's interesting, some sports people just by incidence or lucky, luckily eat the right foods and they perform and they basically you know, healthy and so on. I've seen it with, with groups that I've done, rugby players, uh, the 23, 30 guys that I've worked with, done some research on for my for my script, my thesis, um, how they differ and how some of them literally eat absolutely wrong. You know, and when you change it in four to six weeks, you can't believe that the difference in, in performance. Um, I've done some old rugby players that came to see me and said, well, I still want to play for four or three years, but I can't run for 40 minutes anymore and, it, and when we change their diets according to their genetical blood type and their muscle fiber and those sort of things, um, they changed their lives and came back and said just now I can run 80 minutes again. I've had one spring work um, that came to see me and, uh, and he said CJ van der Linde, I can, name his, if, uh, I can mention his name, he came back and says if you have seen me uh, like f 10 years ago he would have probably still played spring work. And, it, and by changing his food and it and, and that's things that people don't know and your your long-term um, you know uh, performance or performing longer in sport is absolute food that causes um, athletes and sports people not to perform long long you know, and get in, in, in injuries injuries for instance I will say 80% of injuries is caused by food on the long run if you, if you look at it like uric acid, that's my speciality. Uric acid just not just um, cause lactic acid build up quickly. Uh, not that lactic acid is, is bad. Lactic acid is actually good for you. But the longer we can keep the lactic acid down, the longer you can, can endure. Life, yeah. and it, but the other thing that like, like, uh, uric acid and these things, uh, free radicals like uric acid cause uh, in the blood is uh, injury problems like uric acid neutralizes the MSM in the body, the methyl symphony methone, that's your joint oils, makes it dry. And eventually that's what causes arthritis. It starts with gout normally with the men and later on it, it, they call it arthritis. But it's actually the joint oils that's dry and then those joints start and struggling you know, to move and a, a fine powder will come, come off it in simple terms and we call it chondromalacy. That's the, the, yeah. the right word for it. And that's when, when the joints and things start getting problems and swollen and all sorts of problems. But in, in between your m big muscles, there's a membrane. And they also oiled. They you know, move, one pulls and the other one uh, relaxes. And those things are getting dry. And then that's when the, the muscles can't move properly and, and, and causes uh, injury problems in it. And sore muscles, sore muscles in it. I've seen sports people, uh, you know, getting their uric acid down, whereby then suddenly they not just perform better in it, but they're not sore anymore. They don't get these pains after our training session. They keep the fitness longer. Um, they get fit easier, uh, okay. faster, 
and it, uh, so I think that's something just I makes see sense. <clears throat> in the in the gym and, and, and strength and conditioning mm. environment. You often see people taking a week off, um, having a holiday, mm. and when they come back, they lost mm. their fitness. Yeah, um, and it's interesting to see how quickly people, certain people, lose their fitness. Um, so you would say that uric acid is definitely one of the causes for for something like that. Yeah, I know. There's no ways about it. I think looking at South Africans and our sport and it. It's actually, uh, for me, it's a, it's a heartbreaking story because of the fact that we, re I must say, looking at stats in America and Europe, what I've done now with my thesis, we must be the, the highest um, carriers of uric acid problems in, it, in the world, arthritis and, it, and things in it. Uh, and that's the, the, the reason for it. It's all, all um, uh, it's because of our, our natural, um, environment our, our history and and and, and it, that's what we, we eat meat eaters yeah we like so, meat so uric acid is, is predominantly meat yeah uh, your red meat red okay. meat yeah there's, there's your, your white meats your chicken and your fish and those things is a much healthier uh, not doesn't cause really uh, uric acid and things yeah and the interesting is not just meat if you if, for instance eat a fruit that clashes with your blood that forms antigens um, that also causes uric acid. Okay. I've seen it. I've seen women coming in and men coming and says they're vegetarians for years, but they they they've got arthritis. That's very so interesting. So how is it possible? And it, yes, it is because they will normally eat more raw things and more raw uh, and, and fruits in it. And some of those fruits, if they mustn't eat and it clashes with the blood, will cause uric acid, because there's certain fruits that I will say is more worse than meat. Yeah. Okay. This. Um after listening to the to the um, the conversation, like for, for me, I would now think that um, it would be stringent testing that would um, be necessary to to understand what you need to eat. And um, I've uh, been to you and done blood tests with you before. Um, I'd like to explain to everybody like how quick and easy it actually is um, to do these tests, um, and that it is readily available. Um, can you maybe just explain like a, a general um, test that somebody would undergo to improve these? Um, yeah, so basically if a person will come in, we will uh, prick his finger, take three drops of blood and, and put it on a, a very strong microscope and then show, him, show you, like you've seen, uh, your blood yourself, take pictures of it and also take a video, I take a video on a, we call it dark field microscopic blood scanning, I take a video of the live blood, especially in the in first minute or so when it's still alive. Um, and in, in those live blood, um, dark field, you can see the liver flukes, you can see a lot of other things, microplasm like we call it, lots of things in it. And take a video and then you can look at it again after the person have left, I looked at it again and see what I see in there. And then also look at the cells the mi with a microscope. I can look in into a cell and uh, look deeper into the cells and see the structure of it. Uh, and if it's any other mitochondrial problems, that's what carries the oxygen and stuff in it. And, but it's basically, it takes you like six minutes to do the test. And then I put it through a program uh, whereby I tell this program certain things I've seen and then all these genetical things of the person is uh, is muscle fiber, um, be, um, uh, bone fever, um, is he a big uh, man, is he a small man, is he, we, we, you get your, your, your different sorts of three bulls, you, you're born with that, um, it, 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 they call it a, a microplasm, uh, micro, uh, uh, a micro economos, and, and it's a lot of wo strange words in it, but you build basically as a person with very strong bones, thick um, um, skeleton and those things carries must carry more muscle and that's normally when someone will be more white muscle in it. Uh, a thick femur, for instance, don't don't need a, a need a lot of muscle to to to, to uh, walk and to do certain things. And a thin femur, a person with a thin skeleton, a light skeleton, uh, most of the time it will be a person with long muscle. Um, supple muscle and those things and, and more red uh, and f slow twitching fibers that's your runners your comrades people and endurance people and that. so that's things that I also look at and incorporate in this program what I've got and that will tell us then in the end of the day what this person must eat not to just get energy from and what what's many what's important about his daily um, life on it so it will take you 
well, half an hour, three quarters of an hour, because I can talk a lot when people <laughs> is here and tell him all these things, because I always wish I can say more. But I give him a little booklet that I must go read about genetical tests and what is genetical um, testing is and what blood is and why we must eat according to who you are. Uh, um, in the uniqueness of, 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 of us and you know, human beings. So that's what the test is all about. And it can be done in half an hour and a three quarters of an hour. And then I'll send him a whole report, even pictures of his blood, so they can understand it and, and see it for themselves. It's, and that's basically, uh, people, I see this, I just suppose people can't wait to come back uh, because they want to see if the blood yeah. has changed and if there's any difference, in the, if the uric acid or the cholesterol, whatever we have seen in the blood is gone. If it's still there, that to yeah. me, I must say, was the was one of the the, the um, best things that I've experienced um, coming to see you was um, that I can actually see what my blood looks like. We mm -hmm. no we normally go to a doctor and do blood tests. They take blood, send it away, mm -hmm. and you get a report afterwards. And there's a lot of mistakes that can creep in that way. This way, you you took my blood, you put it on the microscope. I could see you showed me certain things, the problem areas mm -hmm. that I need to look at. Um, worrisome things um, and that was very interesting because I can see it so now to go and make a difference um, you know for that that can't lie there was no mistakes that can creep up in that and I can come back in three months or six months time and, and recheck and see where I am and if the improvements that I made on my diet actually made a difference so yeah that I, I think that as I've seen that that's what um, people like um, to s not just to see it but the doctor can't lie to them because your blood can't lie. So you sitting there, I show you, you come back, show it again, and you can see for yourself. Yes, you know, it looks different. There's different things. It's nicer. There's no um, glutination anymore, whatever. And that makes it for people interesting and, 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 and motivated. It's, it's yeah. a huge motivation um, to see how that changes. And uh, by doing these research, uh, I've seen how it changes. Like cancer people come here and sit here and in three minutes you must tell him he's got cancer because you can see it in the blood we call it sickle cells and and then start giving him some uh, a, a proper diet and, 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 and medicine natural medicine and then see how it changes how these um, sickle cells and T and B cells like we call it disappear in time every time when a guy come back you can see now it's it's less it's changing. That's amazing. Everything is changing, and that if it's not changing, we know we're on the wrong path, and that makes it better because than, than any other system, because it's quick, it's easy, and, it, and your blood can't lie. Yeah. Uh, yes, and so you can see results. You see the results immediately. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, and we do t and at other tests just to make sure. Let's say someone have uh, have got cancer. We do a cancer test, and you can see how high the, the count is, and or cholesterol or uric acid. I test it and normally will will recommend. Say, look, we see a lot of crystals in your in your blood. It's at uric acid. Let's test it, and then we can see how, how high it is. Okay. And then go go away, do whatever I told them to do. Come back in six weeks. Look on look on the microscope. See how it changes and test it again. And you can see yes, you, know, you can see the difference in the blood, and you can see the physical blood test that we have done. It's down, and that That's makes amazing. it for people incredible. Yeah. You know. Other motivation in that uh, definitely is uh, is worth it. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you very much for for um, seeing us today. Um, we'll be having your uh, booklet, your blood blood booklet, and the booklet on on uh, eating and sports. Um, we'll be have that available on our site, um, so for people to to um, purchase. So that's definitely something, and we'll also have your details on the um, on the screen. Um, so if people want to contact you directly, then they can. But really, thank you, and it was um, it was very informative. I really learned a lot today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Neil, for you and it, and all the people you sent to me and it. No, it's a big pleasure. And I hope me and you and people like us can make a difference out there. And that's what's important: give our kids a chance in life to perform and definitely be healthy forever. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You much.